was so excited about this show because it is our Halloween week show. And I think everybody out there knows we here at The Sound of Tomorrow are pretty big fans of Halloween. It's true. And the spooky things. And the yep. scary things. Do you? You know, I love, I guess, <laughs> less than scary per se, because I don't like scary movies or anything. I do like you know, spooky, creepy things. Okay. Like what? Like, like a skeleton. Like a skeleton. like oh, But with no meat know. on it. Like no meat on the skeleton whatsoever, because that would be probably too much, I'm actually afraid right? of all skeletons. I think that's okay. the root of my social anxiety. <laughs> okay. Because so I no know ske- they're in there. <laughs> okay. So no skeletons. <laughs> Like a Frankenstein's is probably Yeah, like a Frankenstein. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Yep. Not his monster, though. His monster is too scary. But the doctor, he's all right. He's fine. (laughs) He has a a skeleton, though. He does. I know. Yeah. I I, I like a Dracula. Okay. I like a mummy. Sure. I guess ghosts would be a sweet spot for you because there's no skeleton to worry about. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm definitely fond of my ghost stories and things. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to. So this is like this is probably getting slightly too serious for this, so I won't stay on this for too long. But um, I was thinking about this today. And you know what? I'm. You know, what makes me a little sad sometimes. So what? like in like I was I was um, I was listening to an interview with um, Kara Cooney, who's a professor of Egyptology or something. I don't know if that's her exact profession, but that's like a thing she does. And she was talking about and, you know, this is true for a lot of the ancient world. Like we have this idea that ghosts are just naturally scary. And, you know, they're like restless spirits who are going to who are, you know, they're mischievous or they're 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 sometimes nice, but they're usually like at least a little they're either mean or they don't want to be here and we have to like help them move Mm. along, you know, like um, whereas in. Some other cult, you know, other cultures today, as well as, you know, an awful lot of the ancient world, the idea was like, there are spirits always with you. They're sort of your ancestors and they're usually there to be helpful. And if you need help, maybe they'll be looking out for you and keep an eye out. And I sort of, I mean, I don't particularly believe in ghosts, I guess, but I believe that, you know, we are the sum of, in some ways, of everything that's come before. And we are, you know, the, for for better or for worse, our... You know, our families and our ancestors are sort of in there um, guiding us uh, again, for better, or for worse. I sort of wish we had a little more of that idea, that notion of, you know, a more friendly notion about ghosts as opposed to ghosts are scary. <laughs> I think sometimes we do, though, because, you know, I like to listen to that really great program, Anything Ghost, where mm-hmm. people send in their personal paranormal tales. And mm-hmm. just last night I was listening to an episode and someone was recounting a ghost story, a scary ghost story about how the person was a girl, well, was a woman telling of when she was a girl. And she was telling a story about how she lived in this haunted house and she'd gone through just a really sad breakup. And so she was feeling sad and crying. And then she felt her mom stroking her hair. And she was like, oh, I woke my mom up. What a bummer. But like her mom really comforted her. And then when she fell asleep, she had a dream of an older lady and an older fella and another woman. And the women said something like, you go on ahead. We're going to stay here and make sure she's all right. And so the next morning she went to, to thank her mom for being so patient and patting her hair so nicely. And her mom was like, I, I did not wake up. And the girl was like, no, mom, and like started petting her mom's hair the way she thought her hair was petted. And her mom was like, that was my mother. My mother came to, to see you. And it was really like sweet and beautiful because it wasn't, it was, of course, just like, because it's unexplained and it was confusing. Yeah. But that was one where like they figured out that the older fella was like her mom's grandpa. But it was sweet and it was really nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we do have we do have some of that. But the, even even then, it's sort of like it's a special occasion, you know, for the ghost to come down and sort of they might help us in a really troublesome time if it's a family member that loved us a lot. Um, but, you know, it's not a I, think I don't know just we, when you notice them. Well, OK, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I'm not doing crazy talk about how there are ghosts around us all the time, but <laughs> I didn't I didn't I, know this I was that episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I, I, I I believe I do believe. I don't think of it very often. I think I have a ghost in my house. You think you have a ghost in your house? Yeah. Yep. You don't think that's <laughs> You don't think that's just spotty Me? vision from hangovers <laughs> or your cat no, no, no. i've never seen it um okay when i first moved in here i was cleaning up in this great big closet and i swear i could hear just a woman singing and it was really pretty it was nice i don't think the ghost is unfriendly but yeah. then i had a couple people who who claimed to be very very sensitive to ghosts and i was like hey is there a ghost in here they're like oh yeah Feels like a nice one. <laughs> so it's not bad. I mean, of course, with Halloween coming, you know, we like to think about the scary ghosts. Yeah. I I um I think most people would not like the idea of their house being haunted. If you said like this house is haunted, you'd be like, nah, I don't know if I want to buy that house. Um <laughs> I believe in in real estate that is one thing that a realtor must disclose if they know. Like they have to <laughs> the say house if the house is haunted. I also think um, with all due respect to your friends who I'm sure are legitimately sensitive and have ab- absolutely had the sense of the ghost in your house. I feel like I have never met. I have never had an occasion where someone's gone, where I've heard a story where someone's gone. I think there's a ghost in my house or is there a ghost in my house? And the, the their their ghost sensitive friends have not gone yes there's absolutely a ghost in this house <laughs> so <laughs> well, in that other house i do not mean to insult <laughs> i do not mean that as an insult to anyone but i'm <laughs> see and there I've, i'm gonna keep proving you wrong this episode because in my house that i lived in before you have one, proven nothing thus far by I the said, way you've proven no. that you one time in your house maybe you heard a lady singing and therefore ghosts aren't scary <laughs> you need to let <laughs> this is not me a scientific finish. argument you've made i'm just no, saying but you just said that you just said never... you're proving me wrong nonstop. <laughs> i'm going to i'm okay. going to because you just said that never once has the ghost sensitive friend said like no, nah, I don't sense anything around here. In my old house, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Same ghost sensitive friends were like, nah, I don't feel anything. But did you, what did you, what did you say? I did said, you go, I think there's a ghost in here. What do you guys think? Or did you, go, did you go, I don't think there's a ghost in here. I said something like, I am like the least sensitive to ghosts ever. So I don't even know if I'd know. All so right. it was one of those. All right. So two houses, um, one <laughs> one is definitely one, haunted because a couple people said they're pretty yeah. sure it's haunted, and one is definitely not haunted because some other people said it's probably not haunted. Uh, except I've got to tell you, the other one, I believe now I haunt it. Okay, that makes I think sense. I left enough energy there that now that is haunted. I believe that. Well, are you going to you're... haunt... haunt people? Um, that seems like it'd be fun, doesn't it? Yeah, I plan on haunting you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see who goes first. <laughs> <laughs> I know that is. I yeah. I mean, I guess we'll have to to compete over who gets to haunt whom. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I probably would. I would if I could. Sure. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds I'm fun. gonna. I'm planning on it. Um. So, are you doing anything spooky for Halloween? Um, <laughs> no, I wish I had a better answer for that. We, you know, we, we, it's been so reduced over the last, I, I think, I don't know why. I mean, I think our neighborhood's gotten a little older in general. And then mm-hmm. with all the sort of, I don't know, I know trick or treating still goes on in places, but I think it doesn't go on everywhere like it used to. And I think with a lot of the, you know, with a lot of the events at the mall and stuff, it's just been reduced. You know, they do like, group events at the mall or the park or whatever or wherever they do them i don't i don't think they do them oh, in the park, yeah. but, um i think a lot of people do that stuff and then with covid we, you know we got like one thing last year. we got like i don't know if we got anybody last year i didn't now that get I think about it anybody i did hear them on the street but i did the like absolute halloween signal of turning off the porch light yeah well and i'm I, like and i'm just very it's it's it gets a little stressful for me the last few years because I either want it to be a thing or not. That's it. Um, 
if it's a constant I, stream, fine. But if it's every it's every 15, 20 minutes, the doorbell rings just as yes. the dogs settle down. Like that's yep. it gets really it's gotten I find it kind of stressful. <laughs> yeah. If I could just sit out on my porch for an hour mm -hmm. giving out candy and then go inside, I think I might be more likely to do it. But it does seem like on the street where I live now, it's a group every half hour. Yeah. And if I have to jump up every half hour and like sprint to the door, like, ah, that's not fun. It's annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah. So I think, so, and again, because uh, the pandemic, I, I believe the guidelines this year definitely do say like, go ahead, do your trick or treating, people opening the doors, please wear your masks, kids yeah. wear masks. So better than last year when it was really, yeah, it was actually scary. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if it's a dying thing or not, or if it's just, you know, I know there are people in neighborhoods where they say they still get a ton of kids. Um, this neighborhood we used to, like when I first moved in, we'd get a ton of kids uh -huh. and then it's gradually whittled down to, I mean, like I said, last year is an outlier a little bit, but also if it weren't for COVID, <laughs> I would st it, it, it had still sort of been trending in that direction. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know that last year was that much of an outlier. It's um it's weird. And we used to give out good candy, too. And now we're sort of like, I don't know, because I hate, you know, we used to get. You know, we'd splurge on the nice candy because right. why not? And then. Mm -hmm. But now th this is the other stressful thing is like, so we buy this all this candy. Now we yes. don't even have offices to take it to when we're done. I know. Which is like the way to dump it. So I'm sort of like, and this year we haven't bought anything yet. And we're, I'm trying to figure out like, okay, what can I buy that we've got enough? But I also don't really, I don't want this temptation of whatever candy it is sitting in the house. Or, you know, I think in the past I'm like, okay, well, here's something I hate. <sighs> but we bought, we still bought it. We still have a case of it. Like, what, what right. do you, like, what is, <laughs> yeah. And if and it's something I like, then it's, that's even worse. Yeah, and for me, I it always sounds like I'm bragging when I say I don't have much of a sweet tooth. But what you would need to like really tempt me is if you gave out cheese to the trick or treaters or something, and then I'd be like, ha ha ha. You could just you could just um you could just whittle off a piece of cheese. You could get a cheese like I a could, cheese log. I could I could <laughs> get the wrapped slices. And just you sure dole them out to the children. But um, sure, those for are me, if I get <laughs> like a whole ton of candy in the house, then. For me, especially not having an office to be like, here, everybody, please enjoy these. I am going to go and eat a block of chatter. Yeah. You know, like it just it'll sit around and then I'll be like, uh, how long does this keep? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I haven't figured it out this year. Um, We'll do something. I mean, the cheese is the wrap cheese is a good idea. I mean, it's hard to get a razor yeah. blade in there, but I guess, uh, you know, I've had many years to perfect it. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yep. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. No, this year it's the we're back on the people are giving out their their edibles. Oh, right. Yes. That's okay, the big. Good. Sure. That's the big worry sure. that parents need to walk out. People are <laughs> people are giving away their very expensive edibles to children. Sure. Right. <laughs> yep. So you In need to hopes, be very afraid. Yes, very very afraid that people are going to be giving away their costly drugs. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that is the silliest argument. Like, oh, no, they're going to try to slip you something. Like, what, a cookie? <laughs> right. I mean, I, I'll i be quite honest with you. I'm not sure exactly how much those cost, but I do think they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that that's always funny. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I miss it. I miss the trick-or-treaters. But I think, again, this year I'm probably not up for it. Yeah, I just don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Halloween looks like anymore. And I've, you know, last year I was definitely not in the spirit. We were just, I think we were just smacking them. Well, I guess we're smacking the middle of COVID now. I don't know when the middle of COVID is, but, you know, yeah. it was really like, it was really by, you know, by October of last year, it was really, it was really starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, not that it hadn't been, but I think that was like getting to be the point. I think with fall, I think it was yes. COVID. It was fall. It was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just, it was the whole thing was just getting on my nerves. So I think I was not in the, I was not 100%, even for Christmas, the same thing. You know, I usually, I usually have like a 
three week sort of I'm really into Christmas, you know, me too. Um, it's it's not the six month thing that everybody else seems to do. But, <laughs> you know, it's like a three weeks before Christmas where I'm like, oh, this yeah. is nice. Last year, it was the same thing. It was sort of like, oh, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know around this time last year when there was no vaccine and not much of a hope that I would be able to, oh, see you in person, like mm -hmm. anytime soon. I definitely had that like, okay, and now it's getting to be too cold to even be out in the yard. Yeah. So I won't be able to see anyone because there were those <laughs> few limited yard gatherings with the really weird like a friend would come over to my house for a happy hour and i would point to the chair six <laughs> feet away from me and they would like make a big circle around me and go sit in their chair mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was better than nothing yeah. and we we're outside so it's like all right well we can't hug we have to kind of yell across this space but at least i'm I see my friend with my eyes. Yeah. So I think by Halloween time, there was kind of a crushing like, oh, no, I'm going to have to go inside feeling as well, well. Well, and it was that it was that time too. I think around this time last year, it was. We were just past the point of like, oh, this will be a couple months, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it had finally sunk in that this is like indefinite. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is going to be at least through at, l you know, I think we knew at that point it was going to be at least into the fall, mm -hmm. um, or the, at least into the spring. I mean, yes, if yes, not, yes, yes. you know, if not beyond and you know, that was a long way to, you know, and we got through it. Um, we did. Yep. For the most part, but I don't know. So yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to watch some scary movies probably. And, and you're coming um, to my house, right? Coming to your house. Yep. Where you're going to show us some scary movies, most likely, I'd assume. Oh, probably. You know me. Like your... <laughs> <laughs> like my sixth grade like, musical. Like your home VHS. movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could show you that. Sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm scared of. Yep. Yep. Me too. I'm going to listen to my... My scary ghost story podcasts. I like, I like, um, I, I, I actually, I did a thing for life hacker about scary ghost story podcast, but I also really? did. I did. And I mentioned anything ghost in your honor. <gasps> oh, I, it's, I do like that program an awful lot. I've been listening to that for years. Yeah. Um, but I like my old tiny radio scary shows. Mm. Cause they're Those scary. They are. And sometimes sometimes they're gruesome. Like sometimes they're really. Um, you almost have to warn people sometimes because <laughs> you don't expect this old timey thing. But I mean, the the sometimes the things you're being invited to imagine are <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty elaborate. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but so I like those. But I mean, they're good when they're just scary, too. Yeah. yeah. You know what else is scary, Heather? What? You know, and let's not dwell on this, but um, so this is this is something I wanted to bring up because it's uh, the, uh, this is uh, this is an uh, thing. You ready? Oh, no. Oh, no. Can we do oh, it? No, this Can is. Oh, it? this is going to be bad. This is gruesome Halloween content. Yeah, this is gruesome Halloween content. <gasps> oh, no. All right. Lay it on me. OK, so the this is this is sort of about the state of things in the world right now, and it's bad. So <laughs> um, like I said, we don't have to dwell on this too long, but. Uh, the, you know, you know, we've had issues with the state of Texas. Yes, we certainly have. Um, so S SB eight being, being the big one lately. Um, now a, um, a group of, a group of people in the Texas house of representatives has, um, basically put out a statement, basically put out a press release saying that, um, uh, Obergefell versus, uh, Hodges, the Supreme court case that, um, legalized gay marriage uh, nationally. Um, they're saying in much the same way that they said that Roe v. Wade does not apply to them. Uh, they're now saying that uh, Obergefell versus Hodges does not apply to them either. Um, their state. <laughs> and I, I, I believe the state constitution still says <laughs> like marriage is one man, one woman, or <sighs> there are law stills on the, 
still in the book. So they're saying that um, uh, this no longer applies to them too. Right now, this is just a couple of people in the, this is a couple of Republicans in the Texas House of Representatives. So this is not uh, the state saying this at this point, or this hasn't been tested, but uh, there's a, um, there's a lawyer named Dan Cannon, who was one of the people who argued, <laughs> who argued that case before the Supreme Court. And he's, he's, um, he's saying about this, what I've been sort of saying about the, the SBA and other things, uh, basically like things are bad and I don't know what's going to happen to make them better. Like, um, I think even with the SBA, I, I think people, you know, we've had this trickle of, um, reproductive rights restrictions over the years. So I think we've Mm -hmm. sort of become to some extent immune to it or in the sense of like, we go like, Oh, there's another one. Oh, you Mm -hmm. know, I don't think people, and because of that, I I don't think people realized how bad the SB eight thing was in the sense that the whole point of Roe v. Wade was that, um, abortion is, you know, after, after the, uh, I forget the terminology after the point of, uh, ah, I'm drawing a blank, but the Roe v. Wade, what what it says applies to the entire nation. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point of Roe v. Wade is to set a national standard, mm-hmm. um, not have it be a state by state thing. Right. So for the Supreme Court to go, oh, it's fine if Texas doesn't deal with this. Yeah, that's that's not, you know, and people were like, oh, I guess Roe v. Wade is gone in Texas. No, that means Roe v. Wade is gone because once 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 you start saying states don't have to pay attention to this uh-huh. it's gone that's the whole the whole point of it was that states have to, all states have to be the same on this and anywhere right. you go in the country is going to have the same standard now of course we know for years and really decades states have been finding mm-hmm. ways to wiggle around that oh yes <laughs> but the you know the constitutional standard at least always on paper held it does not anymore um and you know, Dan Cannon, again, the, one of the lawyers who Arbor, ar- argued uh, Obergefell, and I think he's absolutely right. I mean, not that he needs me to tell him that, but there's a with we've had so many uh, the Trump administration appointed so many judges at every level up and down. And at the end of the Obama administration, the Republicans were blocking so many judges. So there were way more open. There were a ton of openings in those four years. And then there were a ton of extra openings left over from the Obama administration that the Republicans had held off. You know, we think about like Merrick Garland with the Supreme Court, um, but that was happening up and down the line. So there are <laughs> judges that are not just Republican, not just conservative, but sort of Trump, Donald Trump level Republican okay. conservative. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them people who you wouldn't even consider qualified to be judges. <laughs> But, you know, they got the job because they say they, you know, they say things that impress very loud, crazy people. I shouldn't use the word crazy. I apologize for that. But (laughs) um, so the concern is, you know, and we've seen. the, the, The concern is now that 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 has opened a door, right, that SB8 thing, not that that's not enough of a door on its own, but it's also opened a door that mm-hmm. says, eh, maybe some other things, you know, we have a Supreme Court that's friendly to things like getting rid of Roe v. Wade, things like uh, getting rid of gay marriage. Um, there's all sorts of trans there's there's all sorts of anti trans stuff going on right now, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, the. Which I think has been a little bit of a little bit i don't want to say canary in the coal in a, in a coal mine because that sort of minimizes it but i think that's been a i think that's been a warning that sort of the white middle class gay men types who are who haven't been paying too much attention to this because they're not too worried about themselves i think that's mm-hmm. who and and so who either you know dismiss or removed themselves from trans issues or didn't seem to care or became hostile to trans issues because hey that's a different thing i'm you know I'm a middle class white gay man. You know, mm-hmm, why should mm-hmm. I be concerned about that? I think that's going to bite those people in the butt as well as mm-hmm. everyone else. Um, I think trying to pretend that <laughs> I think trying to pretend that they were somehow above, you know, um, anti anti LGBTQ discrimination because suddenly, you know, oh, I'm a white middle class gay man and I'm married and I've got all my stuff and it's great and I don't have to worry right. about anybody else. I think that's going to bite people in the butt. Um, 
And, <laughs> you know, this is, again, th- this this Dan Cannon just happened to articulate sort of what I've been feeling of is this is real bad. I mean, he's basically saying, like, if you're in one of these states, you should move because <laughs> this is not yeah. going to get better anytime soon. And there's really there's no I mean, at least in the course of a normal legal process. There's no way to do it. And these states are working to solidify. I mean, they're all doing redistricting things. They're all restricting voting rights. They're all removing people from voting polls, uh, from voting rolls. Um, they're all doing everything possible to solidify the majorities of um, the types of legislators who would restrict abortion, who would get rid of gay marriage, who would, um, you know, pass anti-trans laws. So, <laughs> you know, there's... I wish there were like a, I wish there were a, here's what we should be doing. I mean, there are things we could be doing to make this better in the long run. Um, and they're the same things we should have been doing years ago to stop this from happening now. Mm -hmm. So there might be things that might have an impact 10 years from now. (laughs) Um, but right now it's, 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 I don't know if people realize how bad it is and how much worse it's going to get for people in states like texas Mm -hmm. you know um and i don't say that to separate or divide or say like well you know screw you if you live in texas sorry i i that's not what you know that's not my point but um the people who live in texas are going to feel this a lot more (laughs) and Mm -hmm. a lot faster than people who live in new york or california Right. Well, and and as much as we say, like, oh, people who live in Texas specifically, things are not good in a lot of other states. Right. Texas is just a good example mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's yeah, a absolutely. it's a powerful state. It's an influential state. It has a huge population. Yeah. Gigantic. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's my scary story. <laughs> that is a very <laughs> scary story. Um, might I to to remove the uh the terrible sense I have now, um, or at least to somehow dispel or counterbalance. May I present to you a mystery? Ooh, I'd love it. It's kind of a heartwarming (laughs) one, too. Um, It's going to be complete whiplash on this episode, but that's fine. This is is what we do. (laughs) Um, Did you hear about the volcano that was going in La Palma, Spain? No, what a mystery. Oh, is there more? Yeah. (laughs) So oh. there's this volcano. <laughs> I'm already in confused. Spain. I don't even know what a volcano is. And and apparently um people were very concerned because the lava flow had made a, like had cut off a small group of dogs from any way to be rescued. And so there were these little Spanish dogs and they were okay. They weren't burning up. They weren't in the lava or anything. It was probably scary because from what I understand, they, there was no way for them to get away from this lava, but right. they were alive and people were aware of them and drones were dropping off food and water. And there were people trying to figure out how to do a drone rescue for these dogs where like the drone would drop a net <laughs> and get a net around the dog. Okay. And like th- there were uh, people were working really hard on this because they wanted to save the dogs. Sure. And the dogs were really cute. Those little Spanish dogs. I got to see some of the drone footage of them and cute little dogs. Um, but I read this on NPR and the article's entitled A Mysterious A-Team Just Rescued Dogs from Volcano's Lava Zone in La Palma. Huh. So what happened was the dogs like disappeared from the area and there was a spray painted banner reading the dogs are fine and it was signed from the a-team huh so last i knew nobody knows who rescued these dogs and nobody as far as i understand is worried about how the dogs are doing like yeah so that was my next question like <laughs> yeah the like, only the thing that it, <laughs> It does say at the end, like, well, it seems that the dogs have been carried carried to safety. It's been said that people would like to know who the rescues rescuers are, and for them to share proof that the dogs, some of which have been emaciated by their ordeal, are in good condition. Oh, but well, that's um, a nice story. Yeah. So, I 
<laughs> as long as it's not like dog kidnappers now. But I guess, I mean, I guess if you were a dog kidnapper, there's probably a lot easier ways to kidnap dogs than to like See, that's get them what out of a volcano. Thinking <laughs> like I because I do, I don't want to be too much. You know, I I can be a bit of a Pollyanna. I yeah. just want to see like the good sides. I have been thinking like, well, gosh, I hope these dogs are safe. But then I'm like, well, why would they go to all the trouble like getting them out of the lava zone to then yeah be not nice to them? Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I guess, I mean, I guess the worst case scenario is they're no worse off than they were in a lava zone. But I hope they're being treated nice. So that's good. That's a nice story. I know. I know. I know there's the thing about like, oh, you care more about dogs than people. And I don't. But oh, man, I do love a good dog story. I do love well, a nice dog the story. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And then the mystery of it and like signing themselves the A team or it wasn't Spanish. So perhaps like the A team, but sure. it was team. And it even says in in the article that um, there was. Oh, so there. Let me get a. An update on this. Oh. So apparently there has been an email. And there was an animal group who posted a video to YouTube showing a banner on a wall where one of the dogs was located. And the footage on the YouTube opened with the opening lines of the 1980s TV show, The (laughs) A-Team. Describing in Spanish, in this case, a band of commandos who became soldiers of fortune after being accused of a crime that they didn't commit. (laughs) So, so I don't so know. So they're so they're huge dorks. I they're guess. huge dorks. Though yeah. I think we've talked about the A team on this show before. Sure. I saw it now again quite a few years ago, but as an adult, it was still pretty entertaining. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that I've seen it as an adult, so you know. Yeah. So that was my my upbeat dog news. I love that. Do you have another upbeat story? Is it hopefully about dogs? I only have another confusing story that's about taxes. Scary All right, well, let's, uh, taxes. let's do it and see if we can. Let's try to spin it at positively. That's going to be my challenge to myself. Go. So from NPR, they had they had an article about the latest tax fight explained, which is good because for me, I definitely need the latest tax fight explained to me. Okay. I guess the Biden administration wants to require banks to provide the Internal Revenue Service with information about how much money flows in and out of individual accounts per year. Yeah, this is the and, like the three thousand dollar thing, right? Yeah. Um, what did you say? Three thousand. Yes, maybe I just made up that number though. It was. I think it said in this article the original amount they wanted to focus on was i i want to say it was six hundred dollars okay and I'll now they've changed it to something i think is slightly more reasonable like ten thousand dollars okay but it's to catch tax evaders and i i have to admit this is one of those things like you know i often like government programs and things like that when mm-hmm. i think they're there to help people This kind of creeps me out just a little bit because there's this weird thing going on where the IRS or the policy is saying like, well, we won't be looking at individuals, but then it's saying like, we will be monitoring individuals. Okay. So I'm really, I'm really confused. I haven't read much about it, so I'm going to find a positive spin on it, which is no more tax evaders. That's good. (laughs) i know know. and that's the other thing i don't even know why i'm worried because the the um the article is quite clear that like if you have a w-2 this doesn't even really like apply to you because the irs knows exactly what you're doing already and they don't care about you and so i guess it's more for people who might be getting like huge amounts of cash from from somewhere that it's not reported or something which i wish that were my life yeah i mean Pretty much all of, yeah, I mean, pretty much all of my money is on the books. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how this would impact me Um, to say 
to say, to do like six hundred dollars, I don't know what the. I guess I'd be interested in the logic behind that because it doesn't seem like that's going to. That's going to find the big tax evaders. That's the thing. That's like fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Which to me, I. But I also, mean, how I mean, much I, that be taxable. I mean, but also one of the ways you launder, you know, one of the ways you launder money is by breaking it up into <laughs> smaller bits. Oh, so. now that's scary. Yeah. But so that was my tax thing. I was just like, what? I don't understand this all that well. Um, and of mm-hmm. course, Republicans are saying that the IRS wants to spy on taxpayers, which I mean, isn't that kind of the IRS's job in a way? Yeah. I mean, this is this is. <laughs> This is also, yeah, I mean, you know, I I think that there's, um, you know, there, there are reasonable concerns about the IRS having more transparency and more ability to look directly into our bank accounts. Um, I absolutely understand that. Um, I, I, I can also imagine why Republican lawmakers would be alarmed at the idea of uh, tax evaders. <laughs> <laughs> getting their getting their money looked at more closely. I mean, I guess in a sense, and again, I don't know, I don't know about the limits and I don't know what the logic is behind the dollar values they're talking about, but in a sense, this is going to impact I I, I would suspect well, I mean, I, I think there'd be two impacts here. There'd be people who get a lot of under the table money and who aren't paying taxes on it. And there'd also be a spooky hound biz in the background. He's got a lot to say about tax evasion. He does. He does. He does. He doesn't want the IRS coming for his, for his, two for toys? his milk bones. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on one second. Wait a back. Enough. Hey. Sometimes when the package people come with the packages yes. and they just like hang, you know, they'll just like hang out and they try to like, they like get in the driveway and they do all their sorting and they hang out there. Oh, that really, really flips them out a whole lot. So <laughs> Hillary Clinton, <laughs> with, Hillary Clinton's on the show. She'd like to say hi. If you're watching the video, Hillary Clinton just popped in everybody. She's, um, she's not going to say anything because she doesn't want to be on the podcast, but she wanted to come in and say hi. Wow, I just so, saw her. Another hi, celebrity Clinton. sighting. My gosh, now there's, a, now there's a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. A bunny's here. It's just got very if you're listening to this, none of this, none of the none, none of what's happening is making any sense to you right now. No, it absolutely is <sighs> not. And that's why it's so scary. <laughs> it's very scary. Space now Wonder Woman's here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Sound of Tomorrow. Next week we will be doing one of our two very cool, very fun WAYO fundraiser shows. So be sure to tune in for that. Have yourselves a happy, spooky, safe Halloween. And coming up next is the fantastic program Music Matters. So stick around. Woof woof. Woof. <laughs> <laughs>